and I'm a product manager and I sometimes read the forums out there and, and there's, there's a lot of information and speculation on what it is. And one thing I've read is, well, it must be a Swiss auto engine. And Swiss auto is a company that Polaris uh, acquired not too long ago. But it, it's actually not a Swiss auto engine. This engine was developed specifically for side-by-side. -side. And first application, or the only application, Razer XP. Uh, the other thing you may read is that it's a Weber. It's not a Weber. And uh, a lot of speculation is that Polaris was going to put the 850 Sportsman engine in it and in, in the next power-up. Well, it's not an 850, and there's not a whole lot in common with the 850, the oil filter and a few bolts are. But like I said, it was developed specifically for side-by-side, -side, and that's an industry, industry first. It's not an ATV engine that we tweaked and modified to fit in the side-by-side. It features a 180 degree crankshaft, so it's naturally balanced, dual overhead cam, and the reason that's important is it's a higher revving engine. It has an RPM red line 8750, and so it gives you more power in the range you want it. Now, it's also high performance, it has features like an integrated oil cooler and a high capacity stator, 750 watts when, it, when the engine's hot, so it actually is a little more when the engine's warming up. Interesting thing, it's 500 watts at idle. Now that's more power than a lot of side-by-sides put out when they're at idle. So it, it, it puts out a lot, a lot of power, but I, to help you understand how it does that, you know, it's a high density engine. We, we refer to it as, uh, it puts out 100 horse per liter. So it's 88 horsepower out of, out of an 875 cc engine. The first part of that is what happens to get the, the air and fuel into this engine. If you look over here, we have a, this is called the resonator box. It's huge, and for the consumer, it does two things. First thing it does is it, it does reduce the amount of intake noise. And that, that's one of the benefits the consumer uh, won't hear that, that intake noise. But the other thing it, it, it does, it's a big buffer. So your, your air comes in, goes into this reservoir, and it's, it, it's a big air reservoir ready for when that consumer hits that throttle. You get you have like this reservoir of air ready to go into the engine. If you notice, it, there's a huge intake tube. You can almost put a baseball <coughs> through it in the large, ready to go into the air box. And in this enormous air box, we have a new flat filter. Now it's the same great media that we've developed since uh, we started with Razor, and you'll find in the other rest of the Razor line. And, but don't be fooled. It, it, it may look flat and not that big, but it has 90% more area than our, our cylindrical uh, filter used in the Razor 800 uh, models. So once, it's in, once the air gets in the air box, it goes into the throttle body. Dual 46 millimeter throttle body, and they're located right next to the head. So talking about throttle response again, that's where you want your throttle bodies to get that fast, crisp throttle response. You don't want it two feet away like you sometimes see. And it, so we designed this purposely uh, to get the most performance out of our engine. So that, that's a quick overview of the tuned intake. Same thing goes for the exhaust. And you may have noticed the engine is oriented differently than what we have in the 800 uh, Razor model. It, the crankshaft running from side to side of the vehicle. And we call that east-west. And one thing you get out of <coughs> turning the engine that direction is your exhaust is coming out the front. We did that on purpose. It's a tuned exhaust length. We didn't have to wrap around in the engine compartment. Uh, and so it's a nice even flow right into the right into the silencer. The other thing you may notice, stainless steel. And for the consumer there's two reasons for doing that. One, corrosion resistance, but the second one, it's a much stronger material than using carbon. So it's a high performance exhaust, high performance intake. It helps generate that high performance, high density <coughs> power we're looking for in side by side. <coughs> but now we want to kind of shift gears and look at how we get all that power to the wheels. And we have a very high performance, high efficiency drive tank train we've designed. And like Roger said, uh, every sub system <coughs> has been redesigned on XP to get that extreme performance, starting with the PVT. The clutches look similar, but it's a different setup. We have a high, we have a dual inlet cooling, 
So you have a high speed and low speed cooling. You'll see two um, ducts coming in to cool the PVT. The clutches are redesigned. You, the, starting with the drive clutch, it's a zero lash drive clutch. So for the consumer, you won't hear that clunk when you take off. The clutch buttons, instead of being 12 millimeters, are 20. So you're almost three times as much area. Uh, the German clutch is new, and that, and that belt is actually the strongest belt that Polaris makes. I mean, we, we make snowmobiles that are well over 100 horsepower. That's stronger than any snowmobile belt we make today. So that gets the power from your engine to your transmission. Touching on ori engine orientation again, I, I talked about how the exhaust is, it, it's beneficial to have the engine turned that way. The other thing it does is it gets your, uh, it maximizes the amount of power you can get to the ground because your crankshaft is rotating in the direction of your rear wheel, goes through your clutches in that same direction, comes into the gearbox, and this high efficiency gearbox has five shafts in it, and they're all helical cut spur gears. So that as the power comes in, they're all also rotating in the same direction. No right angle drives that rob your power. It's very compact. This gear case actually weighs less than the gear case we use in our Razor and Razor S and Razor 4. And the way we do that is the shafts are very short. They're helical cut, cut gears, like I said, and um, and they're mounted on bearings, so there's really low uh, friction forces in there too. But it efficiently transfers the forces through the gears, and you get more horsepower to the ground. So this gear case, although it weighs less, transfers 65% more power uh, than our Razor 800 or Razor S gear case. You'll, if we come up here later, you'll see one chain. That one chain is used for reverse, and that's it. And then, of course, it's you, get, you maximize your power to the rear wheels, but then you also have to get power to the front. And that's the one right angle drive right here. When we talk about the front gear case, like, you know, again, we redesigned everything for the Razor XP to maximize performance and match it to the power of the engine. And the, and the front gear case is no exception. If you, some of you may have noticed, and our consumers did that in model year 11, last July, we made a lot of improvements to the front gear case. More, more oil volume in there. Uh, it, cages, they all got a you know more you know, higher performance sink cage. Uh, a big roller bearing for the uh, the output shaft. And the rest of the Razor model models, they, they didn't really need that. But we were planning this side by side for a long time, and. We made those improvements across the line because we were preparing for Razor XP. And we like to keep parts common. But for Razor XP, we took it to the next level. In front, in that same gear case that we put across the line and, and prepared and designed in preparation for the release of the XP, we have a billet aluminum cage. This is similar to what you'll see in the off-road magazines. Retails for over 300 bucks usually, usually higher than that, plus the labor to put it in, and it's on every Razor XP. So we're matching performance for extreme performance from the engine, through the clutches, through the transmission, the front drive. Uh, so like Roger said, we've re redesigned every subsystem for extreme performance to make sure that we made no compromises on this vehicle. Now that's a quick overview. Uh, I'm sure you have a lot of questions, and we'll have to answer those later. But uh, we're going to move on to the